get into the tutorial, let's talk through some definition. What exactly is a Victorian corset? This was a piece of garment that was worn underneath gowns in the 18th century. It's also known as a stay. And one common thing I found when I checked and did my research online was it typically pulled in around the waist and the neckline was relatively low to push the bust up to give the wearer like a very very flattering figure we're not going to do something as extreme as that i'm going to be doing my own inspired version taking some of the key features like the boning the snatching in on the waist the dipping in on the front and the exaggerated hips with that being said let's get into the tutorial i'm going to be working with the following materials to make my own version of the victorian corset and my fabric here is a soft wool fabric this i have about one and a half meters and that was roughly how much i ended up using i decided to actually fuse my fabric with some fusible interfacing to give it more body and structure and then i have some plain black lining because my fabric is actually a very 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 small checker black and brown combo my boning is this plastic one i'm using here it's actually quite slim it's like a centimeter wide and to go with that i have a very slender bias tape as well i'm going to be using to create my boning tunnels now the video is broken down into these chapters and i'm going to break it down for you guys to watch at a pace that you are comfortable with so you don't feel overwhelmed these are the measurements i worked with and i worked with my measurement to create the sewing patterns for this corset Starting with the front pattern, I'm going here to draw a horizontal line like so and I'm marking 2.5 inches below that and from the 2.5 inch mark, I'm going to mark the vertical distance from my bust to my waist. Mine is 6 inches and then I'm going to go into mark my desired corset line. This I'm marking from the top line which is going to guide me to make my neckline and towards the bottom which is going to become the hemline i'm squaring these points across like so these horizontal lines are where i'm going to be marking my dots and planning in the panels that this corset has it actually has quite a few panels the front has four the back has three i believe so it really sculpts the body very very well now i'm going along the bust line and i'm marking a quarter of my bust measurement and on my waistline i'm marking a quarter of my waist measurement plus one inch for the dart and i'm connecting those points together along the side to give me the side seam like so now i'm going in here to the hip line and i'm going to mark a quarter of my hip measurement and that i'm going to connect back to the waistline so i have a full side seam for the front of my corset plan i'm going to go into plan the style lines after that but before this i'm going to mark two inches below my hemline because i want the corset to dip on the center front and on the center back and to make that dip more prominent i'm lifting up by two inches along the side and i'm going to be connecting those two inch drop and rise on the side in a slanted or curved line that goes down towards the center front and lifts up towards the side along my neckline i'm marking half of my across chest mine is six inches and i'm going to be connecting that back to the bust line along the side seam and then i'm going to mark a middle point along my neckline now i want the neckline to be a very shallow a sweetheart so this i have marked one inch below the original neckline i drew and i'm connecting it back to that middle point now in terms of division i want my panels to be separated by one inch along the hemline because i kind of want everything to gather up in that middle center front zone so this side panel goes from the waistline to around three inches away from the center front edge and then my second panel is going to cut from the hemline all the way to the neckline in such a way that it slants as it goes outwards and they are separated by three inches so the straight line and the next one i'm about to draw are separated by three inches and that i'm connecting to the third one inch mark along the hemline Along the waistline, I'm going to mark half an inch on both sides of this inner slant and I'm going to be drawing in a dart that goes from the hem to that half inch mark and my dart stops one inch below my bust line so I don't lose any measurements around my bust. 
so I have a dot that is one inch wide along the waist and then it goes into a point at the top and at the bottom that is how I'm going to be shaping those two panels I will not be needing that middle area because I'm going to be tracing off each panel as individual patterns so you end up with four panels for the front of the corset however i know i want the hip to be a little bit more exaggerated this part is optional but i'm going to be exaggerating it out by an additional inch so when it sits on my body it kind of spreads out and gives the illusion of a wider hip even though it's just hanging on its own and doing its own thing now i'm going to go in to reshape the neckline to prevent gaping this i've noticed from past corset projects and i'm marking half an inch on both sides of this panel like so and this i'm going to shape back onto the bust point on this side and on the bottom side as well i'm also going to go to this next panel and mark half an inch on both sides and shape that back into the bust point. Taking away those measurements from the neckline would allow the neckline to lay flat on your chest and you prevent a situation whereby when you bend over, the your bust just like doesn't sit right. So I'm going off here to trace off all of the individual patterns for the front. I'm tracing off this mid front piece that is going to have seam allowance all the way around including along the center front because i want a burning tunnel there as well i'm also going to trace off the other three pattern pieces with seam allowance green line notches and annotations so they are ready to be cut and connected to the back pattern pieces <music> I'm going to go ahead and set aside my front patterns and create the corset patterns for the back and I'm going to cut out a big piece of paper this I'm going to use for my back plan and the back I'm going to trace off from the front so I'm tracing off the side seam like so as well as the hemline now the back has a few changes compared to the front for the back i'm shifting the center back edge inwards by 2.5 inches so the back is a lot more narrow compared to the front this i'm just drawing in the new center back like so and then i'm dropping the back neckline by one inch below the bust line this i'm going to curve back onto the side seam the front and the back side seam have to match so when you cut the patterns and pieces everything connects now i'm going in to mark one inch twice away from the center back edge and the first one is going to connect back to the side seam and the second one inch mark is going to be the division that creates the other two panels i hope that made sense so you would end up with three panels for the back of your corset and because we've already shifted the center back away i'm not going to be adding any darts on the back of this corset I've gone ahead to trace off the back pattern pieces. This is the middle center back one. We have the side curved panel and then the middle curved panel. This I've traced off, added seam allowance, grain lines and annotations. And the last piece of pattern that I made off screen is the model C panel. Mine is 13 inches tall and five inches wide. This I like to add to my corsets these days because I don't just like my skin showing through corsets on the center back. It's optional, but I'm just going to make a modesty panel for my corset. These are all of my patterns done for the front, for the back, and I'm going to go ahead to cut all of my pieces in fabric and join everything together. I have folded my fabric in half, selvage to selvage, and I've gone in to pin my patterns onto my fabric. So once I cut them once like this, I have one of the pieces in the main material and I'm going to use the same patterns to cut my lining as well because the lining and the outer shell are the same dimensions with the way I'm going to construct everything together. So I'm really going to go ahead to cut using my fabric scissors. Don't forget to notch your pattern pieces as well because when you have a lot of pieces to join together, notches is going to make the construction a lot more seamless for you, especially when you have curved seams that have to fit together. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, I'm going to go ahead to fuse my fabric onto the wrong side of my material. This I decided to do because my fabric is really soft and I want the flare on the sides to have and hold its shape well. So I have fused the front and the back pieces as well as the modesty panel on the wrong side of the material. This way, once I stitch 
steam and join everything together the corset actually would hold the shape a lot nicer just be mindful of the interfacing that you choose to work with i ended up working with this one that felt like paper and i think that was a wrong choice but it was already too late by the time i have figured why it was a wrong choice because if you don't iron down the paper one well what you will see happening is bubbles that don't look nice so just be aware of that when you're doing yours with construction, I'm going to join up the vertical panels first on the front and the back before connecting these side curved flare panels in a way that they sit sort of independently. Now I'm sewing up the back panels on one centimeter seam allowance. I'm going to do the same with the front. And once I'm done stitching everything together, I'm actually going to press all of the seams open because it just sits a lot nicer and it makes it easier to attach the boning tunnels later on. Now that I have my front pieces as well as my back pieces joined, I'm going to be connecting them together along the side seam with right sides facing each other. Once I have them stitched in place, I'm going to go ahead to work on the flare side panels this i'm joining side seam to side seam so the front left to the back left along the side seam and vice versa once i have them joined on the side seam on a one centimeter seam allowance i'm going to press that seam open this seam is curved so when you are pressing it just be aware of that it should actually make a little bit of a curve once you've joined and you've pressed everything nice and open this i'm going to be connecting together from the front all the way to the back i say this is the trickiest <laughs> and the most i would say it's complicated you cannot just rush joining these two pieces together because what you're trying to do is you're essentially trying to join two curved edges in a way that they sit nice and flat so i would recommend pinning things first match notch to notch and you would find that the bottom piece or the flare piece would be a little bit bigger and I recommend putting that under your machine as you sew because the teeth or the moving part of the machine would help you to spread and distribute that ease in a way that you don't end up with any gathers or any puckers. Okay, I'm done stitching all of the main outer pieces together and I just want to try it on to see if I like how it fits and then if I need to make any changes. I have it here very sculptural I'm just going to try to wear my jumpsuit because I don't want to undress so this is nice I like the flaring and the dipping but I think there's a little bit of excess material under the bust so like around here and here this I'll take away through this seam that seam so I said I'll take away like another half half inch like yeah this that needs to go needs to go there as well and I think mostly through here because the moment this is roped up and tied in it would lay flat but you can see there's a little bit of extra material this from like here to there I'm going to get rid of that and then assemble the lining and add the boning tunnels sweet camera I have stitched away the excess along the front seams I ended up stitching away about half an inch around the waist area underneath the bust point on the side one and then on the one closer to the center front I just stitch away the top edge so it's more of a straight line from the neckline down to the waistline once i had those changes made and i was happy with how it sat i'm going in here to add the boning tunnel using bias tape this is the way i love to add my boning tunnels because the bias tape already has the edges folded in nicely for me so this i'm going to layer over my seams and cut the top and bottom edges so i can take this to my machine and so the sides of the bias tape leaving the middle open and wide enough for my boning to pass through so just be sure that the boning you have is thin or wide enough for the bias tape that you are working with next up i'm going to repeat the same thing on you know those the curved side detail that we have on this corset i think this is the main feature of this corset and it's what makes it somewhat unique and fun that i've stitched up in the same way leaving a 
you know a little bit of space in between for me to go in to add the boning afterwards and i'm going to take my plastic boning here like so and first off i like to round off the edges so they don't prod and poke through the fabric when i've stitched everything up and then i'm going to pass the boning through the tunnels like so leaving enough space at the bottom and at the top of the tunnel for me to stitch my seam allowance on the neckline and on the hemline if you don't have seam allowance and if you don't have space there when it's time for you to finish this up with either bias taping or lining because you have the burning poking through very close to the edges that would make it a bit difficult for you i'm going to go ahead to go off camera and join all of my lining pieces together this is what it looks like i just stitched it in the same order that i stitched the main piece and now i'm going to put right sides together all of my joint lining to my main piece this i'm going to use to finish the neckline and the hemline of my corset that way I, I know once i sew along the neckline along the hemline turn the piece inside out i have a beautiful finish around my corset <music> With the aim of leaving one side of the center back open to turn this inside out, I'm sewing on a one centimeter seam allowance, joining, joining the lining to the main corset around like so. This I'm going to stitch all the way around till I get to the other side and just have an opening wide enough for me to turn my piece inside out. Before I turn it inside out, I'm going to go ahead to trim the corners down. This way, when I turn the piece inside out, I have nice, clean and sharp corners. I'm also going to trim down the seam allowance, especially around the this part of the hemline and then the neckline as well. Once that is all done, I'm going to turn my corset inside out. Because of the boning, this can look very wrong, but once you have your piece inside out, I'm going to go off and iron it down to relax all of the stitching. This is what my corset is looking like. It's coming together really, really well. The funny thing with this thing is once you start doing the work, it just feels so fulfilling when everything starts to connect and fit together right. Now remember that opening that we left to turn my corset inside out. I'm going to go ahead to fold it in like so and I'm going to use a very narrow edge stitch to conceal or to close that hole. This I'm going to be sewing like that using a normal straight stitch taking my time as I stitch this up because it's going to be visible on the right side of my corset. Now that I have that part of the garment done, I'm going to go in to add the eyelets. This is how I plan to lace up the corset. I'm adding eyelets, which is going to allow me to add like a nice ribbon on the back. Now my eyelet is this one that is in gold. It's about half an inch wide and my eyelets are spaced by 2.5 inches. I ended up with five holes if I remember on each side. I have a separate video where I shared, you know, how to actually like cut and put eyelets in pieces but you would have to first go in and cut a hole wide enough for your eyelets to go through and then this i'm taking to my machine this machine helps me to put eyelets in corsets or in garments this machine i also think you can use to add press buttons i haven't tried that out yet but it's definitely a very very good investment and it's not too expensive if i remember correctly when i got it from amazon now these are all of my eyelets put in on the left and on the right hand side and the final thing i would need to do is to sew the modesty panel the modesty panel i've used is interfacing on the wrong side of the fabric and i'm going to put right sides together and sew all the way around first turn it inside out before finishing it up I'm just going in here to finish this side of the seam like so, leaving one end open. I'm also going here to trim down the corners and the seam allowance before turning this piece inside out to reveal the right side of the fabric. You have the option of pressing this first before you fold and stitch away the open end, but I'm just going in here to fold it inwards like this. I like to add pins so things don't unravel when I move them to the needle on my machine. Once I have that pinned in place, I'm going to sew it up with my edge stitch on my machine to close off my modesty panel. 
after doing that i went ahead to press everything nice and flat and i'm ready to connect it to the back of my corset this i'm going to do by hand um some people actually have their modesty panels as separate pieces so when they lace up their corset they just insert the modesty panel into the back i like to just tack it on the top edge the bottom edge and somewhere around the middle so it stays in place even when i'm not wearing the corset but once that is all done that is the final step of sewing everything together for the lace up on the back i just worked with a simple black ribbon you can use your fabric to make your own lace up or strap i just use black ribbon so it goes with the black bias that i have used to make the boning tunnel but this is my corset all done i got so many stairs when i went out to shoot this piece and i know it's something that i could easily dress up for events paired with a black skirt as well like a black maxi skirt that would look really really nice i would say the thing i would change definitely is using a like a, the right fusible interfacing but aside that everything looked really really chic sits beautifully on the body and because it's a corset i can make it as tight as i want to really snatch in around the waist i hope you guys enjoyed watching this project if you did please give this video a thumbs up don't forget to tag me on your recreations on social media at kim dave designs and until next time have a good morning afternoon and evening wherever you are bye